Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous hot pad, Christmas hot pad if you will, that I've been promising for two years. <laughs> and we finally got it going, finally got it going um, and complete and you will get this complete today. It is very, very simple. Now the pattern is simple. The only difficult thing is the colour changing and that's the back of it. So you can see probably a tiny little bit of colour changing there. Oh, it's not really that noticeable. So in today's tutorial, you will need three cottons. You'll need the light green, the dark green and the white. We are doubling our cotton. Now this cotton is a DK weight. Okay, so if you don't double it, it's not going to be thick enough to be a hot pad, yeah? Mind you, this can actually double as a, a placemat. It's super gorgeous. It looks lovely during your Christmas luncheon or Christmas dinner, whatever it is you're hosting, if you're hosting anything this year, this can be one of those placemats. From here to here is basic, and this section here is something very similar to what we're doing next week with one of our projects as well. So it, if you couldn't work it out with this, hold on until Tuesday of next week. Or it might even be Thursday. I haven't really decided yet. We're doing this pattern as a border row once again. But in the meantime, colour combination by the lovely Emily from one of our live antics. Now, if you are not a part of our live antics, you must be because it's just a lot of fun. Now, what I do normally is I pop a whole lot of yarn on a table and I say, right, one of our subscribers on the live today will get an opportunity to choose the colours of our very next project. And Emily was lucky on Saturday, or lucky enough, I should say, on Saturday to choose these colours for me. She didn't know how I was going to make it up. She didn't know I was going to double the thread and she didn't know the colour combination that I was going to put it in. She just chose the light green, the dark green and the white and they are all here. I used this yarn right here, Bendigo Woolen Mills Cotton 8 Ply or a DK weight or a number three weight overseas. So you can use any number three weights or any DK weights or any eight plies that you have in stock, double it up and it will be able to make this little pattern here. The mistake I made, which is not in the pattern, I used a 5.5 millimeter hook to start with. Don't use it, yeah? Use the six. The reason is because as I was working, I noticed all this happening in the middle. That meant it was way too tight. My stitching is very, very tight. I crochet really tightly. So I should have used for my pattern, for my hands, a six millimeter hook. If you crochet really loosely, then you can use a 5.5 millimeter hook. Let's move this out the way. Then you can use the 5.5 millimeter hook. I started with that and when I realized it was bubbling a little bit, I made my stitches real loose, which is how it ended up perfectly flat in the end yeah but if you crochet tightly make sure you use a six millimeter hook if you crochet loosely then use the 5.5 just a little heads up there for the pattern I kept forgetting to give you the count in the end I just popped them all up the top I think I only give it gave you count in one row <laughs> in one round I should say but it doesn't matter I pop the count up the top so that you don't miss out yeah uh, you will need your scissors sadly you're going to need that sewing needle there's going to be a lot of ends because you are changing in between rows rounds so you are hanging on to one thread and then changing to a second thread in between rounds it's a little bit of a complicated um, change of thread it's not like your normal change but, you know, take your time and do it really slowly like I did. <laughs> do it really slowly. All right. So that's about all you will need, guys. How much will you need? I used 51 grams altogether. So divide that in half. What is that? 25 grams per color. I'm not even per color. Just really maybe 25 to 21 grams for the white and maybe another two or three grams or something for the light green. Um, I really did not use a lot of the light green at all. I just forgot to 
measure how much I used. So I do apologize in advance, but altogether 51 grams. So give or take 25 grams for per color, maybe 26 uh, for the white, a little bit more for the white. You use the white more than the green. In fact, you won't need a lot of the dark green either. It's more the white that you need more of. All right. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm not going to keep you anymore. I'm just going to let you get started creating this gorgeous hot pad slash placemat. Yay. <laughs> Happy crocheting to you. All righty, guys. We are going to start off with the dark green and the white. And what we're going to do is form a magic loop or a magic circle. So just leaving your tail end forward, grabbing your working end. Give yourself a little bit of tail so you can weave in later. So grabbing your working end, wrap it around your fingers, forming a little X right there. Then you're grabbing your hook, popping it under the first loop and pulling that back loop forward. And I have one, two, and these two here. You need to hold everything so you don't lose it. Transfer it into the other hand. And then you're chaining one and two. And in that center, this chain two, by the way, will, will not act as a stitch in any round, yeah? You are doing a double crochet. So yarn over your hook into the center of the work you just made, the loop you just made, yep. Pulling a loop through, you have, I'll see how I'm tightening it up a bit. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Two loops left, yarn over, pull through the last two. And what you do quickly is just grab that little tail end, pull it a little bit, not much, because you need to fill in that space. And also, you need to grab your stitch marker and pop it in the stitch you just made, which is the two top loops there. Oops, if I can get it to sit still right there on that stitch not your chain two just the stitch yeah then you're going to put another double crochet in there yarn over your hook into the space pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two two loops yarn over pull through the last two and do it again three this is your third one and four we're putting nine all together. So if you want to go really fast, then you are welcome to do so. I'm staying nice and slow for the new crocheters. Five. Welcome, by the way. Don't forget to subscribe. Six. Seven. Eight. and nine and there you go so to count your stitches these tiny little v's well actually they're big here the v's they look like the letter v's these are your stitches now it can be a little difficult to see when we are working with two yarns at a time but it's one two three four five six seven eight and your last stitch is nine and we are not counting the chain two from the beginning all right what you want to do now is grab your little tail ends and tug it tight pull it real tight and that's where the magic happens yeah now you are going to slip stitch into the top of the stitch with your stitch marker pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook taking out your stitch marker once again chaining one and two but in this case we are putting a Double crochet in the same space as our chain two. Or the same stitch, I should say. And then you are popping your stitch marker. I should have got a bigger one for this particular tutorial. Never mind. It's okay. It works. And you can use a piece of thread or a paper clip or anything, safety pin. Yarn over your hook. We're going to do a second double crochet in that stitch. And off you go in the same stitch as your chain two and your double crochet all right and now it's two in every stitch in the round and if you played your cards right you've got nine double crochets here you should end up with 18 in the round so off we go and doing our two in each stitch like so 
two double crochets in every V you come to and that is that stitch you see right there two loops on top yeah so two in there Sorry guys, hope I'm not going too fast for our new subscribers. Let's pop another two in the next. Two in the next. We're almost there. Two in your next. And my thread is all pulling again. That's what it does, it tugs a lot. And two into your second last one, and two, and two into your last stitch, which is right there. One, and two. Pulling up that loop for a minute. And counting your letter V's, yeah? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And that's what you should have. Guess what we're going to do? Slip stitch into this stitch with a stitch marker, grabbing your loops and pulling them through like so. All right, so that's what you should have. How gorgeous is that looking? I'm loving, loving, loving. All right, so in the next round, we are going to use the white only, which means we have to drop our green. Sadly, dropping the green means we have to cut it because we want to work two rows of the whites and then two rows of the light green. All right, so what we're going to do, keeping your white attached, yeah, cutting your green <laughs> to bring it out uh, as long as you like and grabbing your second white okay so this part here can be oh, it can be a tad tricky all right and for the new crocheter this this can really test you okay but what I want you to do is to grab your green tail at the back hold it in that finger right there Oh wait, take your stitch marker out. Excuse me, Mary. <laughs> well, excuse me, she's doing well. So grabbing your green, one more time, grab that green tail at the back. You still have the white attached. You're going to grab your new white and just pop it next to your other white, bringing it up. You might want to give yourself a bit of a tail, otherwise you're not going to have anything to play with later when weaving in. So just grabbing that white, Pulling it through there. Now, turn it around. Grab the green and the tail of your white in your hands, holding it tight, pulling the rest of your work real tight so that everything can adjust itself. Chaining one and two. And in the same stitch, you are doing a double crochet. All in the same stitch, like that. All right, so it was a tad tricky to attach, but it's not completely bad. <laughs> Do you like that? Not completely bad. Um, pop your stitch marker in the top stitch. Now, I took it out again because I was splitting my threads, making sure you're picking up literally all four strands, yeah? So, yarn over your hook. You're doing a second one in the same space. And then... You're jumping into that next stitch there with one double crochet. Yeah. Two into the next one and two. And one into the next. Two into the next one and two. Are you getting the picture of the pattern? And then one into your next. All right. So it's two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way through. I'm going to pop this on fast for you and continue doing your two, one, two, all the way through. And I'm going to pull out my 
thread here and I will meet you at the end of the round so we're doing our next stitch which is two and off we go one and two and two and into your very last stitch right there you have two there and you have two there so you need to have one into that last stitch just one all right and we are going to slip stitch into the top of that stitch with your stitch marker pull a loop through taking out your stitch marker chain one and two holding it there all right, and there you go. That is what we have so far. All right, so let's go ahead and do yet again a second round in the white. All right, so yarn over your hook, double crochet in the same stitch that you are in. White's a little troublesome to see, guys. I do apologize, but uh, you know, it is Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas and it's a nice hot pad. Hopefully we don't burn it. No, that's not true. It's cotton. We won't burn it. <laughs> Don't you love it? Hopefully we won't burn it. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Listen to me. Yarn over our hook. We're going to put a second double crochet in there. Lax off. And one into the next stitch. One into your next stitch. And then two double crochets into your next. One. And two. And well, that's pretty much the pattern. It is one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, and so on. So one into the next, a second one into your very next, and then two into the third. Yep. Yeah. One. And one. And then two into that very next stitch. I think you're getting the picture. So what I want you to do is one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around until you get to your very last two stitches. Wait for me there. And we will talk about what we're going to do next. We'll just pop this on fast and off we go. Okay, oh, I've just got crochet happy. One and one in the last two stitches. I just forgot to stop. <laughs> As you do. All right, so there you go. That is what you have so far. Get excited. But we're going to do yet again another color change. All right, so what I want you to do firstly, and I think it might be better in this case, that we colour change when we pull the thread through because I can notice a little bit of a, a colour change there. It's not too bad because we're changing to the white, but I think changing to the light green, it will be very noticeable. So popping your hook in your stitch, dropping your stitch marker, obviously. We're going to cut one of the whites. It doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter. One white is going to be cut. So cut one of your whites. It doesn't matter which one you cut because you're going to reattach later anyway. I'm sorry. But now you're grabbing your light green. All right. So I have my light green, but what I want to do is drop that one thread at the back, the little loose one that we just cut. I don't know why I'm doing it so close. There. Then 
we grab our light green, giving ourselves a bit of the tail. That's the edge. We're just going to give ourselves a bit of tail, something we can work with. And just pulling, let's get a close up, everything through the loop and through to the loop on our hook. So what we're going to do now, because a lot of it's going to be loose underneath, we're going to grab the white there and the other white, not the white, the white there and then the green there. See that loop right there? That loop there, that's the white that we just pulled through. Now you might find it's going to loop, so you just got to give everything a tug, 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 nice and tight, and then chain one, two, and in that same stitch right there, you're doing a double crochet. Now that's a lot less visible than the one down here, so we'll leave it at that. But the one down there is not too bad because it's okay, it kind of all sits in. Um, when we change back to the dark green, if we do that, it's going to be noticeable. From the white, it'll be noticeable. All right, so there we go. We've got our light green. And we're going to put a second double crochet in there like so. Yeah. Then we're doing one double crochet in the first stitch we come to, one in the second stitch we come to, and one in the third stitch we come to. And what are you going to do in that next stitch? You're going to put two double crochets. So it's a very basic circle that we're all used to making. All we're doing is playing with the yarn and that is the only thing we are doing. Yeah. So one into your next and your next second and your next third two into your fourth. That's all you need to remember for this row. All right, so it's one into the first, one into your second, one into your third, and two into the fourth. All right, I don't think I need to show you anymore. I think you get the picture. It is one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two. So three ones and a two three ones and a two, all the way until you get to your last three stitches. When you get there, meet me there. I'll actually pause the camera for this part here because it's a lot bigger now, the rows. So I should say rounds. Do the round right there and I'll meet you back here once you're done. All righty guys, here we are at the end of the round and I did my last two there and now I've got my three singles left. So you do a single of one, it's actually a double crochet, but I'm calling it single stitches, two, whoops, and three. All right, so that is what you have right there. Now we are going to slip stitch, you're going to hate me guys, we're going to slip stitch using the two whites again. Grab that second white, once again you are popping it down there, yeah, and again we are going to slip stitch and slip stitch with both the whites rather than doing it without the whites it's a lot easier we still have these ends down here which I want you to pull real tight because they will start to open up so make sure those ends we're going to uh, talk about weaving those in in a minute but first we will join our whites all right so our white I should say because one's already on there so what we're going to do once again you've got your white there pop your hook in your stitch that you're going to join it with and oh, I forgot to cut the green didn't I <laughs> cut your green guys hello she's telling them what to do and she's not doing it excuse me all right so cut the green and get rid of it because it's going to leave a mess everywhere if you've got too many threads on the table grabbing your white and what did I do before I held my green at the back or whatever color that was before and the tail end of the white and I pulled them both through like that pull it through to the loop on your hook tightening everything up yeah taking out your stitch marker all right so chaining one ordinarily I would chain that extra one like I did down here I'm not going to I'm going to leave it like that so you've got your chain that you pulled through and your second chain so yarn over your hook we're going into the stitch with your same stitch you are in with your chains and doing a normal 
Double crochet, like so. Whoops. <laughs> Pop your stitch marker in, don't drop it. And just do a second one for a minute. Pull up that loop for a minute because what we're going to do now, guys, is we are going to weave in some of these ends because this is what's going to happen. It's going to split because the loops are loose at the back. And we want to weave in some of these ends just to tighten up our work. All right, grab your sewing needle. All right, and we're going to work with, we'll leave the bottom, the middle one first. We'll leave that because we'll work on that later. It's more important to get some of these ends weaved in or this is going to happen. You're going to get a hole. You don't want the hole. So what you're going to do is tighten everything up. Let's start with the white. I've got a little knot there. We'll give that a cut. That's my, um, when I'm um, winding up my yarn. I'll pop a little knot in there to wind it up on the yarn winder. And I forget to take it undone. So there you go. All right, so there's our white. And I'm going to tighten it up real well. Yeah. And all you're going to do is find some white. Let's have a look if I can get a close up even for you. Just to find some white ends to weave this in. And what I'm going to do is just grab a little loop here. Listen to those birds outside. They get all excited. I think they're eating my um, cat's food, <laughs> as you do, cat biscuits. Um, and just weave that in there, a little bit out of, uh, you know, trivia here, a little bit of trivia, a little bit off task. Just keep weaving in. And when you get to a certain area, all you're going to do is find some stitches to weave it through, like that. Yeah. Don't over weave. It doesn't need to be overwoven, but it does need to be woven in a little bit so that making sure you can't see the needle from the front because you don't want to be able to see that thread now the reason that you don't have to fuss too much is we are splitting that thread and we are splitting up the yarn as well so we're putting the white up that way and we're bringing the green down this way that will never come undone so grab your sewing a needle yep and a thread Oh, thread the green. You're threading the green. And now with the green, once again, you're going to tighten up. You're going to find a place. I'm going to weave that in here, actually, because it's not bad. So what I'm going to do is weave it through, just being careful. This is green, and it will be noticed if you are weaving it through one of the whites. Where's the white I'm weaving it through there? If you're weaving it through up here and it gets noticed from the outside, it's going to look bad. But make sure you can't see it. Yeah, and just pull it through and then you're going to go back into the stitch different area of course splitting some yarn in a different area pop your needle through just check you can't see the needle in your cord which is very very good yeah and I'm only going to do it twice I think that's perfect for me like so you could do it a third time yeah you can do it a third time we're going again we're going to leave that center one but what I want to do is just this area right here because once again I'm going to split it right so you can see the hole and I don't want that hole to be visible so we're going to tighten everything up and close up the little gap grabbing the sewing needle again I'm using the white now next to the light green what's well, the only white left I think I oh, know there's more up the top but we're just going to use this one here and once again you're going to find a place to weave it in wherever you want okay so now this white I might go downwards because look at all that up there I don't want to confuse it so I'm going to go down into a stitch down there making sure you can't see the needle from the front yep only the only reason I do that is so that you don't see the thread coming through the front of your work not too bad on the white you won't be able to notice it so just go back the other way and weave through anywhere where you see white so it's not too bad on the white, but once you're crocheting or sewing in the green, that will be noticeable. You don't want that. There you go. And that little gap has closed up a little bit. And this is all underneath too, so it won't really be noticed. However, if it really bothers you, then you can really be more pedantic than I am. 
But I think that's perfect. I can't see anything. I can't even see it now. Well, it's in the back. <laughs> Let alone the front. So there you go. All right. So, oh, was I out of frame there? I was just cutting the end. It's all right. So what I want you to do, um, you can do this off air, is to weave in after every second row you do. All right. So weave in after every second row. All right. In the meantime, your job now, and this is the easy part, guys. You know how you've been uh, increasing in every round. Yeah. You, oh, if I can get this to work for me. <laughs> One loop is smaller than the other. Let's. Let's see how we go at fixing this up. There we go. Now we're under control. Hello. All right. So what I want you to do now is two. You've done two in the first stitch. You're going to do one in every stitch for the next four stitches. So two, three, and four. And then two into your fifth stitch. And guess what? That is the pattern. All right. And I'm going to get you to head off on your own in a second. But we'll do that pattern again. It's one in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, and two in your fifth stitch. Way too easy, yeah? Way too easy. All right. So your job, guys, is now to go one, two, three, four, and then two into the next. One, two, three, four, two into the next. Do all of that. Get to your very last four stitches there. And I'll meet you there once you're done. All righty, guys. Here we are at the end of this round mm, come on mary you can do this and you should have four double crochets left yeah or four stitches left and you are doing one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the end three and four no casting off oh what have i done picked up some green under there no casting off. All we're doing is slip stitching into the stitch with your stitch marker. Pull a loop through. And I've split the yarn. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out. We don't want that to happen. So you start splitting yarn with two threads. It's worse than splitting yarn with one. <laughs> All right. Pull a loop through. Do you like that? And pull it through to the loop on your hook. Chain one and two. Remember, these don't count. And you're just doing a double crochet in the same spot. That counts. So we're popping our stitch marker in the top stitch of that double crochet. It doesn't look like I split that one, which is good. <laughs> in the same stitch, what are you doing? Exactly what you do in every round. A second double crochet. Yeah. And then one double crochet into each stitch for the next five. So you've got one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to hold it there because. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the round. I've been forgetting to give you the amount of stitches that you're supposed to have in the round. I have been popping them up the top, uh, making a little disclaimer there. Uh, but in this round here, once we've finished our last five double crochet, you should have 63 stitches. So yarn over your hook. One. Whoops, don't split the yarn. Two. Three, four, and five. So altogether, 63 stitches in the round. You're going to slip stitch to join, but once again, we're going to change the color to the dark green. So grabbing your dark green. All right, so let's cut that white real quickly. And it's any one of the whites. I'm going to cut the smallest one because I'm used, I, before I cut the biggest one, and I, I want the bigger one <laughs> to last me. The small one, look at that. It's not going to last very much. So I'm going to cut that small one right there. 
and we are going to attach our green now once again it's one of those things where you it's a bit tricky to do you hold your white at the back your little white tail that we just cut at the back you're popping your hook in your double crochet you're grabbing your green and your white together and you're pulling those loops through like that and then through to the loop on your hook now just being careful before I did it and I left a little loop right there so you've got to be very careful it's a little awkward you grab your working ends there and you grab your tails there and you might find that your working end one of your working ends loops the white one is there so all you need to do if that happens to you you just give it a tug and then you've got everything into place I thought I'd mention that because I know I did that earlier and I didn't think to mention it yeah so what you're going to do now is chaining one and two again they will act as nothing in the same stitch oh we can take out that stitch marker excuse me Mary you are popping a double crochet like so and popping your stitch marker back in that double crochet I think you're getting the picture of what we need to do in every round so it's more just the color change you need to pop a second double crochet in there nothing's changed in that area and now you're doing six double crochets across and off you go one two three four five and six and then what are you doing your two double crochets in the top of that first stitch so the same thing's going to happen in this round as well so I really don't think you need to watch me do this yeah you are going to put six double crochets across this way two into your seventh six across two into the seventh six across two into the seventh do that all the way across when you get to your last six stitches wait for me there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next all right so here we are at the end of this row get excited guys because we're nearing the end of our piece you are still doing your one two three four five whoops whoops and six all the way through now you're going to hate me <laughs> because we are changing yarn again the thing is we are changing back to the green later for the final round so this is entirely up to you whether you want to leave your threads attached yours truly is not going to I'm going to cut mine if you leave your threads attached it'll be noticeable at the back but not that noticeable all right but still i'm going to cut mine so i'm going to pop my hook in first i'm going to cut the green uh, one more time this is the second last time we're cutting yarn and then the last time will be the final round and it's actually the final round at least if i can get the green to work for me hello so we're cutting the green sorry guys we're going to reattach that green in a moment as well all right so we're going to attach the white again or reattach the white yeah all right, so you're going to slip stitch mm -hmm, into the stitch with the stitch marker. I might take that out while we're doing this part. It's really awkward when we're changing yarns. Yeah. So we're going to drop the green at the back like that. You remember how to do that bit. I'm going to get rid of all these ends. It'll just confuse you a little bit. Grabbing your white again, leaving yourself a nice long tail and your thread here, popping it on the hook. And pulling it all through the stitch and through the stitch on your hook as well now remember how I said there might be a tiny loop at the back you're going to give everything a tug yeah but it might pay to hold on to everything <laughs> don't let go of it Mary hello 
and there you go so you're giving everything a tug that's the only time you tighten your stitch don't tighten your stitches in the round or your work will curve a little bit like mine <laughs> chaining one and two and a double crochet in the same spot and you know this part because you've been doing it in every round so this part is easy and even the next part is easy so double crochet in the same space and this time you're doing seven across yeah so one two three four five oh nearly knocked the frame there hello six and seven and in the first double crochet from your previous round you're putting two double crochets it's a quick and easy way to remember it All right, so that's that. What you're going to do here is simple, simple, seven across, two in the next, seven across, two in the next, and so on, so on, and so on. Get to your last seven stitches right there and wait for me there and get excited because we're about to finish our hot pad. Wow, isn't it getting big? It's so big. Big. All right, so let's get a close up. Well, it's big enough, I think. We're done, but anyway, we still have to do one more round, and you have seven of these last stitches to go two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, you have a choice for this final round. Oops, that's too big. If you wanted to, uh, you could do two things. One, you could leave the white and just finish it off with the white in the next round. Or you could change back to the green. Yours truly is going to change back to the green. I'm going to go back to the green only because it's a little bit of fun colour. But if you have a decor where white suits better, then you can stick to the white. And you don't need to cut any ends now if you don't want to. Consider we started with the green, the dark green, let's end in it. But you guys can keep the white if you like. This is your final round, guys. Get excited. Now, the stitch we are using in this round... It's very similar to the stitch we are going to use in the next one of our tutorials next week. So pop, it's probably the same actually, pop your hook in. You're going to cut one of the whites and I'm going to make sure I cut the right one again. <laughs> that one there. One of, cut one of your whites, any one of them. All right. And grab your green and attach it to the white that's on your hook. As close to it as you can get so you don't get that big loop like I keep getting <laughs> but it does look nice working with two different colors at the same time I love it I do love it so much all right so grabbing your white at the back and your new green tail right there making sure you have pulled all your ends nice and tight as best you can and you're chaining one two not three just one and two and double crochet in the same spot you are still putting your um stitch marker in here but it will also in this round be classified as a chain three but you don't need to worry about that for now so that's one double crochet two double crochets three double crochets and four double crochets all in the same stitch then you go one making sure you see that stitch one two and in your third stitch you are doing a slip stitch pop your hook in pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook chain three one two 
and three. Now remember I said before this will act as your chain three right here. That's what this stitch is right here. In the same stitch you are doing three double crochets. One, two, and three. And then what are you going to do? Skip one and two, slip stitch into your third stitch like that. And so far that is what you should have. Again, chain all one, two, three, three double crochets all in the same stitch. Super easy, yeah? This is a very easy border that you should be able to do. It's a shell border. One, two, and three. Slip stitch in there. Chain one, two, and three, and three double crochets. Yep. What I'm thinking here is you're actually getting the picture. Yep. Yeah? Skip one, two, and slip stitch into the stitch, and then one, two, and three. And I don't think I need to show you any more. I think you know what you're doing. Three double crochets, slip stitch into the third. Chain one, two, three. Three double crochets, slip stitch into your third. One, two, three. Three double crochets, slip stitch into your third. Just repeat that pattern there over and over and over again until you get to your last few stitches. I'll meet you there once you're done. Oh my gosh, am I loving this? I truly am. All right, so you got to that last section where you would have done your chain three, your three double crochets, and now you need to slip stitch across. What are you going to do? Where you have your chain two right there, you're going to slip stitch straight into there, pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook, pull up a loop, and pat yourself on the back because you are now officially done. Look at the big loop I'm leaving because yours truly, you know, I'm very pedantic. Um, I left the stitch marker in there, but we didn't need the stitch marker in there, did we? No, we didn't need it in there. All right, so what your job to do now is making sure that stitch is fairly tight because you don't want it to be noticed that that's the last stitch. It really won't be noticed anyway. Now, if you were anything like me and use the 5.5, you may have a slight bubble in here if you crochet tightly. But it's not too bad now. It's kind of loosened up a little bit because I made the stitches really <laughs> loose on purpose. Um, but hopefully you changed to the 6 and didn't use the 5.5. But there you go. All right. So there you go. How gorgeous is that? Pat yourself on the back. Guess what? Oops, we've got all this. Now, before you go, I just want to show you one of the threads, and that is your centre thread. You've already done those other threads, so you know how to do it. But that centre thread is a real worry. That can come undone. Problem is, before we went through with um, our threads in both ways, you can still do that. You can split your thread. You know what? I think I'll do it. I will. Um, and thread one one way and one the other and that way it won't ever come undone but you want to make sure that they're both pulled nice and tight first some people don't realize this you pop this in the wash I don't know if you wash by hand I do but if you pop it in the wash machine that is likely to come undone it may not but it might and you don't want to take that risk so I would weave in as much as I could um, to make sure that that does not come undone. And you're just going around that center, making sure you can't see the needle from the front. See how I keep turning it around and having a look? Yeah, keep going. You've got one more little section to do. So there's your green. So you're gonna go right out into the green, skipping over your green and going further into there, checking the front. And I reckon that's that. You don't need to do that one anymore. You still have the green to go, so just cut that there and re-thread your green with the needle, uh, like so. And do the green. You could do it in a different direction, actually. I might do that. 
might go in a different direction with the green. The white we went this way, the green would go in that way, just for fun. Nothing there, good. Pop your uh, little thread through and all of it through the next side. Check the front, nope, all good. And there, check the front, nope. And there you go. So you're done. You are now officially done. Uh, let's just pretend that you've weaved in all your other ends. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Once again, a special thank you to the lovely Emily for her colour combination today. Don't forget you need to weave in these gazillion ends at the back. Let's just hide them and pretend like they don't exist. Um, and you need to weave in those ends. You still have time if you want to create our other Christmas items that we've got on our playlist. Please check the very first link you come to in the description box down below and you'll come to our 2022 Christmas playlist. Oh, very exciting. But once again, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to join us on Monday for our last Christmas gift item. Not so much Christmas colours, but Christmas gift item. It is a cushion or a mood pillow, if you will. Oh, <laughs> and that's the actual part one of it. And part one is the only one we've created so far. So please check part one, the very second link in the description box down below. And that will be part one of that cushion. So you haven't missed out on too much. Part two will be on Monday. Once again, thank you for joining us and ah, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Ciao for now.